Hey and welcome to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide. Now if this is your first time watching any of these videos then I'd ask for a minute or so of your time just so I can explain how to use this guide and what it's about. Essentially this guide is entirely complete and it will help you get a full platinum for Sekiro. It covers all NPC quests that are relevant, all items, a best path through the game and also specifically strategies to get you through the game with the path of least resistance. Remember that this guide is supposed to be used as a full guide but you, could, you can use it for specific areas if you need to but if you're confused about how you know we are at a certain point or doing a certain thing, chances are the answer is in a previous episode. When it comes to boss battles, we really only show you the easiest method that we could find based on our perspective. If you want to fight the boss differently, it's up to you in this case to find a different and harder strategy. Now, if you have a good tip or have a question, leave them in the comments and I'll add them to a pinned post. That way this guide can constantly get better or more efficient. So if you have a question, check the pinned post first. If you do have a tip, please leave a timestamp so I can find the bit that you're talking about. Also, please bear in mind that this guide is taking me literally hundreds of hours to make, so if you enjoyed the video, the least you could do is give it a like. If you really enjoyed it, perhaps give us a sub! And if you really, really enjoyed it, you can support the channel on our Patreon if you're feeling generous, or perhaps sub to us on our Twitch, that's another good option. Now on to the guide. Hi guys and welcome back to Sekiro the Ultimate Guide, and today is part one of uh, Fountainhead Palace. And this is a, probably the longest area in the game. Definitely the longest area in the game. But before we do that, we're just going to go and upgrade one of our prosthetic tools. Now, this guy, Anayama, he does sell the upgrade materials, as we already covered. Uh, we need, like, five scrap iron or something like that. And if he doesn't sell the upgrade materials, it's probably because you didn't send that dude on the right. Yeah. You need to send him to the merchant. And then he'll have the upgrade materials in his inventory for you to buy. Uh, so, the thing is though, is that chances are you probably already have tons of spare scrap iron and hence don't even need to spend the coins in order to buy the scrap iron. Um, if you've been sucking up all the items uh, using the square, the square button, you'll have probably plenty of spare scrap iron. Um, but just in case you don't, you can get the scrap iron off him. Now we're going to get the gouge on top and... Which requires, unfortunately, upgrading the spear. Yeah, um, which the spears almost useless. It frankly. is useless now, because the <laughs> ape's dead. There is no use for it at this point. Uh, there's one very minor use. So we're going to the wedding cave, and this is how we get to Fountainhead Palace. It's not actually joined on any area, it's just like a kind of teleport join. Yeah, it's, it's just there. Um, now the reason why we got the gouging top, it's not entirely necessary, but it's just a shuriken that deals more damage, and this there's like a, one bit of like the next coming up area where it allows you to save on some emblems and just makes like one bit slightly easier. So you just go in a little hut thing and uh, it will teleport you here. And a giant fucking rope tree monster. Yeah, watch the cutscene, it's kind of funny. Um, it's kind of wacky. So coming up is a specific boss that is somewhat challenging, but there is a method to essentially uh, eliminate two of its uh, forms really, really easily. You can legitimately do phase one of it. And it is the corrupted monk, like the... Actual the, monk. Yeah. Not so it's phantom form. There's a, a bit of a knack to doing this boss, and it requires a specific technique, which hopefully you'll be able to pick up on. So, phase one, it is easy enough. You just have to learn to parry its attacks, and its attacks are fairly telegraphed to the point where parrying them isn't the biggest issue. But what you want to do is get round about this area of the bridge, under this kind of main branch towards the exit of the, the exit of like this kind of area. bridge area, yeah. So, uh, you can jump on the uh, the guy's head to do, or the, the monk's head rather, to use, you know, from the sweeping attacks. If he does a sweep attack, you get to do the, the head jump, which fills a little bit of his posture, but that move is actually very, very relevant for how we need to defeat this monk guy. So essentially, once you defeat this monk's first form, um, he will teleport, and if you defeat him using a, like, when the, the little red orb comes up and you press R1, if you defeat him on the ground, he teleports in a different way from if you do a drop attack. Now, essentially, you have to just be very careful, you don't want to be dealing too much damage, you just want to make sure he's in the right position. Uh, and then you parry his attacks until you can max out his posture meter. Now, if you max out the posture meter and you don't get the head jump, specifically, don't hit him. 
you want to make sure that you're hitting the posture meter off his head. So you can max out the meter until it's almost there. You want the visceral to be an aerial attack so yeah. that you can then do the rest of the fight this way. Yeah, because otherwise if you do it like normal, he teleports too quickly and you can't just eliminate his second form. But for some reason, if you do the aerial attack, you can. So you'll see in a second, it is a bit finicky, but... There it is. There. We maxed out the meter by jumping off his head, the press R1 in the air, and then quickly, quickly jump up to the, on this branch, and then he'll then teleport to the middle of the stage. Now, if you were to do this on the ground, he would just immediately teleport and go into his second form. And he would immediately pick up the aggro, but because you're up in the tree during his teleport, he drops aggro. Yeah, now, it is kind of... Janky. It, yeah, and it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense what we're saying unless you've kind of discovered it for yourself, but hopefully um, you can work out what we're saying. So what you do here is like the normal Corrupted Monk. You go, you put on the Fistful of Ash, and then you hit him two or three times, fist to the vash, and then you repeat that until he's essentially dead. Now you can also use the um, the, fi the firecrackers as well, but this should be enough, maybe? Uh, I think I probably need to switch to the firecrackers. Either that will max out his uh, You'll posture. probably use one fang and blade just for some flash. Oh, I think we get there just off the... Yep, ten fistful of ashes and three attacks in between. Yeah. There's a fistful of ash. Three R1s, another fistful of ash, three R1s, and then just continue that. And that is how you do the monk. Now, I think I've got a little bit more footage of the monk coming up here just to kind of re what we're saying. Pre-patch used to be able to skip stage three as well. Yeah, by it's you true. just jumping on a branch and then aerial attacking him again. So, I think this is, uh, right, this is me showing you the difference between his animation here. So, I've used the on the... So, he hops back and recovers immediately, but because you've done the aerial attack... He has to stand up to recover and that might break it. Yeah, so again, I think this is me also doing it on the ground. Yeah, so if you do it on the ground, he like, he immediately does this teleport into this form here, right? But if you do the jump on his head aerial attack, like what you saw us do initially, which I think I uh, do it here, um, if you do it in the air, he teleports to the middle of the bridge and then goes into that weird ethereal phase. And that's like super important because teleporting into the middle of the bridge gives you the time to do the drop attack on him. So as you'll see here, right? He doesn't step back. So like, so he does step back, right? But he goes into the middle of the bridge first if you do the drop attack uh, by jumping on his head. But if you do it on the ground, he just immediately goes into the ethereal form. And that's the difference. So you have to do the drop attack on his head to be able to miss out his entire second form. And, um, but yeah, it just makes it so trivial. And as long as you do the drop attack, it even gives you enough time to get onto that branch. You, you saw there with that last, uh, that last go at it, there was quite a lot of time uh, that it gave yeah. you. But you have no time at all if you just do the visceral on the ground. Um, if you don't skip the monk, his second form, he'll summon copies of himself throughout the fog. You just have to run around a lot, like, slingshot between the trees and you're probably fine. Um, until that phase is over and then the rest of the second phase is the same as phase one. He'll just occasionally go into that f that mist attack. Yeah. And then stage three... The it's exactly the same all the time, yeah. Yeah, stage three is the same as stage one, but there's now a centipede and some of his attacks spit poison or acid or something like that. He has like a little bit of an AoE going on with remember, some of his attacks. Uh, remember to upgrade your attack with the memory that he gives you as well. Yeah. But uh, So hopefully that explained the monk boss well enough. Um, if anybody's having any issues with that, I'll try and explain it a bit better like in a comment or whatever, but hopefully you got the gist of what we were saying there. Just make sure you get on the first form, you get the visceral via jump off his head. That's pretty much all you need to know. And then you jump out of the branch and then visceral, do another aerial visceral. So now we're moving on to the rest of the video. And uh, Fun fact, if you let these guys um, play music and suck all your health away, don't you turn oh. into an old man? Uh, yeah, so you, you get a... Uh, they give, these, give, these guys give you a status effect called en Enfeeblement, and this is essentially this game's version of, like, Terror... Uh, not Terror, um, like, Frenzy or whatever. It's really, really horrible. It makes you super slow. You can't attack. You have, like, one hit point. And essentially, it's it's so horrible, it lasts forever as well. And this is purely like a line of sight based attack. So you want to stay the fuck away. Yeah, it reduces your max HP. 
yeah. for the period that you're enfeebled, and I don't think you can healing gourd. Uh, I don't think you can either. Or even if you can, it wouldn't matter, you just die immediately. Yeah. So we're going to use the finger whistle to like bait these guys over for a visceral attack. Um, if you kind of just run out and start fighting them, uh, one of those guys that we're talking about will spot you, enfeeble you, and kill you. Like, theoretically, you can just, like, kill them quickly, but, you know, sometimes you can be put into a kind of awkward position and we're not about taking risks with this guide, are we? We are not. Now would also be a good time to start practicing that um, aerial takedown if you bought that. Because uh, yeah. you're going to be going up against a lot of uh, a lot of hops very soon. Yeah, these and enemies do hop about quite a lot. The, the aerial visceral is just a direct counter to them if you get good at doing it. But There's again, you've got the axe as well, so... Yeah, but it means that, like when they're flying around and going like all lightning orb and shit like that, you can just leap right at them and take them out. That's you true. can just go one after the other, jump into the air, kill, jump into the air, kill, jump into the air, kill. So uh, you want to follow the very specific route that we're taking up the right side of the roof and then... Getting behind the two archers. Killing these guys and then we jump down another level and get the last guy. Um, so these guys honestly aren't even really that hard to fight in combat, these especially with axe. Um, these those, ones aren't. Those more purpley ones, like kind of, they're wearing like more, like I guess just more purple to their clothes. Um, those ones are a little bit tougher at the they very least. They have swords instead of bows as their their main weapon, I think. Uh, some of them have like a kind of spear stick. type thing. Yeah. Stick and blade. Yeah, stick and blade. <laughs> That's what they used to call it before they called it a spear. It's true. Long knife. <laughs> <laughs> Big stabber, as the orcs would call it. <laughs> sure. That's fact, by the way. Yeah. So, uh, now we're coming to get this guy. I think this is a grave wax here, so that's obviously quite an important upgrade material. So, it's quite worthwhile actually getting this specific item. Yeah, this guy doing some Tai Chi and you just walk up like that. Ruin his fucking day. End it. Yep, that's it. Time to debone the fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are kind of fishy people, aren't they? They are. So, moving on, we get to use the uh, the gouging top. It's not... Well, accidentally I don't equip... Oh, I do equip the gouging top. Okay, cool. That's good. Um, it actually fires a little bit faster than the initial... Like, the, the normal shuriken as well. But you just bait these guys, kill them with the gouging top like it is what it is. It's easy peasy stuff. These dogs have, like, a new attack as well, don't they? Like, scream and get back up. Uh, they've got they, like a they lightning rally, attack as well. They also ra they rally other dogs because they're not dogs. All the like, dogs rally dogs. These ones aren't dogs. They're, they're, they're like fish dogs. Yeah, if you look at them, they're, like their heads fishy. So you can use the top to kill those guys, and then it allows you to like kill that guy without like because if you ran in and fought the dogs, clearly they're just trying to like trap you there, right? Because that guy could p possibly enfeeble you yeah, while you're fighting off dogs. And leaving the temple is a bad idea because the only thing the temple's surrounded in is water and lightning attacks in water. Oh yeah. So yeah. it's your choice: camera angles or loads of lightning damage. Just do as we do, and you'll yeah. be fine. Use the gouging top. Is this the gouging top's the one that's just what? What does it's it just do? This, it's, it's just, just this, more damage. Yeah, it's just this. It doesn't have like it a does special damage effect. through block. Right, that's what it is. Okay. So now we're moving on. Right, does it do more damage through block just because it does more damage? I don't know. Is that why know. it does damage through block? Did so it, it does specifically say it does more damage through block. It does yeah, say that. I know it says that, but does it do that because it just does double shuriken damage? Thus Who knows? it does more. So, okay, this next part coming up is actually a massive pain in the ass. Another point where I've made the game a lot fucking easier for you. So do exactly as I'm doing. You just want to skip a bunch of enemies, I assume? Uh, no, we take care of everything. Um, oh, you do? Wow. But this is this is a, a, a very practical way of taking care of them. Um, because, oh God, man, this bit is so irritating. See, if you're just, there's so many of those enfeeblement guys that if you get caught out, it is just the worst. So, you want to crouch behind that screen because if you walk in front of it, the guys out there will see you. So you can like hide in this part here and... Um, Essentially, and there's waiting an for enfeeblement guy on the left, and there's one in front of you. So you're waiting to break the one in front's line of sight, and then you can go after this guy. The good job is, is they all die in one hit. So that's like, yep. Useful. You don't even need to get the visceral, if your attack power is leveled up. Anyway. Uh, you yeah, presumably, yeah, they might might die in two. If I mean, they might I, just die I in one hit. I can't imagine but... your attack power is low enough that they don't one shot at this point because they don't really have any health. Mm, yeah, so, so we're grabbing those items. So now we're moving to right at the end here, so we can backstab this guy. 
Yet again, another fucking enfeeblement dude over there. So, um... Break line of sight, and then he can't play the funky music on you. Exactly, exactly. That's why I kind of ran yeah, to the left a little bit there. to the left. Uh, then we can pick up the yellow gunpowder. So now there's, like, a little patrol we need to take care of. So... That's that bit's easy enough at the very least, and there's a. This place has there. the same architects as Ashina Castle. How do you mean? Uh, it looks the exact fucking same as Ashina Castle. I don't know. I think it looks kind of differently. I think it's just kind of. Yeah, has... it's got the doors, the bridge in the middle, like. So you want to come around this way? Yeah, there kill like, this guy. There's a little. Um, you can jump into the into the rafters up above as you well. You can, but there's no items there. So now there we want to right. equip the item, bl the combat art blood smoke. Uh, this is specifically very useful for these these parts. So, blood smoke, you can backstab this guy, press R1, and then it will immediately make you hidden from the other guys, and it allows you to just get the chain backstab. This is, like, super useful in certain areas. The only areas. time that I've ever seen blood smoke used, uh, like, well, in any way. Most of the time, your, like, ninjutsus for after your visceral get ignored. It's actually they're required very, in this area. very situational. Apart from this area, blood smoke yeah. is incredibly useful. So, this was just to show you there's nothing in the rafters. I used puppeteer in this one when it came to the, um... I think it was one of the guys on the outside. Because there's, like, a room where there's three of them just meditating in the middle. And there's a chest in it, I think. We'll get to it when we get to it. It's, like, right here. It's, like, on the other side of this wall you're up against. I used Puppeteer on one of the uh, one of these little flute playing dudes, and he uh, he was like playing music for the for the enemies while I held them back. Does it feeble? It, I don't know. He was just there, like. So you want to? This guy is actually the biggest pain. Um, so you want to hit that guy and then like run to the end, and then go back and kill that guy. And you Get also the lightning want to, return. You also want to kill that guy before fighting this guy because if this guy just so happens to like you know you move in front of the door or whatever. It's just, it's the biggest pain in the ass to get enfeebled, so you just want to take care of them first and foremost. So, you know when he jumps up to hit you with a lightning? I'm pretty sure you can aerial kill him if you have the skill. Probably. You can leap towards him and just hit R1 before he even fires it out. So, you might have noticed that we didn't really use any emblems for this particular part. That's on purpose because now is when we use the emblems. So, use uh, your gouging top now to kill this guy from a distance. Um, you only need uh, four, so that's fine. If it was closer, it might have been three. Possibly, possibly. I don't know if that is a thing in this game where shurikens do more damage. So closer. now what we're gonna do is take a Gatchin Sugar. Again, classic item, best item in the game. You, uh, you have the infinite use Spirit Fall. So, I, actually, so I accidentally took a Spirit Fall. I might take the Sugar, but... Well, use the Spirit Fall. So it, it used emblems, which was... I'm trying like... Oh, you try to conserve yeah. on the emblems. Okay. So, it lets, you, it lets you can backstab that guy. This guy won't see you, so now you come in here and then you blood smoke this guy. Mm -hmm. Makes you hidden. Allows you to kill this guy via backstab. You blood smoke this guy? No, you don't even have to. Nah. Because it's this guy. It. Yeah, it's this guy. Now, the ones in red don't do the enfeeblement thing on you. They just, they're just they just there. No, he's the, he's the noble. He's the one who... So, they the lore behind this is that they give the water or something like that they they feed all these people they give all these people the shit to drink and they, and turn, they turn into, into that, fish yeah. servants yeah and that's what mibu village is because that's like all the water from this area is pouring down into there and that's why they're all like begging for something to drink and shit like that because yeah. they're addicted to the water they'll eventually become fish nobles as well well oddly enough that happens in like a quest that we're about to just do yeah. um so but that is the bo the most efficient way that I could find to take care of that full area. So hopefully that is uh, helpful for you. And there's another like mini boss back here, isn't there? The, uh, yeah, it's another ox boss. The blazing bull. Just total <laughs> reskin. Right. No, this one's purple. It's ethereal. You can do bonus damage with divine confetti. I mean, it is what it is. It's super easy. See regardless. if you visceral it without divine confetti. It only does half of its health bar, not its full health bar. Uh, no, that's that's not true. Yeah, it is. What the fuck? Wait, wait. So, quickly take this uh, route here that we're showing, like this way dark around this guy, because you want to kill the guys on the roof, because you don't want them shooting at you when you're doing the boss. I had done it. I done the aerial. I done an aerial visceral attack from above it, and only took away half a health bar. So this is an interesting point to make for this particular for the the bull boss. Um, you apparently can like immediately like it's walking away, and you can scare it and then like kill it immediately. But if it hasn't noticed you and you scare it 
it just seems to glitch out for me and chances are it'll be the same for you. And I'd done this over and over again and I could not get it to work. It would just freeze in midair until I hit it and then it would just start the boss fight up. So we're just doing it legit here. Um, uh, maybe you can look on YouTube and find someone else doing it. You can it, but... visceral it from above using Divine Confetti. I'm 100% sure. If you break the line of sight, you can walk along the, the top of the structure. Um, so like you want to get us aggro and leash it out of this corner. Like round to where you're fighting right now. And then you want to break line of sight with it and run the fuck away. And then while it's walking back down there, get back on that wall that you're on ab up above it right now. You can, from up there, put on Divine Confetti and backstab it. Uh, not backstab, uh, Visceral, and you'll kill it. Okay, interesting. That's how I've killed it twice. Well, in this case, the way we're doing it is just the way we've done the first bull anyway, which is ludicrously easy. Yeah. So... You... Divine Confetti does more damage to this thing, by the way. So, I mean, you can put the Divine Confetti on if you want, but it just works exactly like the normal build, so it's not even really a problem to begin yeah. with. You're going to get the Visceral before you do its health bar, so the Divine Confetti is really irrelevant. So what we're doing here... But you do need it, if you do get the Visceral attack from the air, you need the Divine Confetti to one-shot it. Yeah. That's what you need, because this counts as a ghost, technically. So we are parrying its, uh, its head charge attack. When it does, it lower its head... Uh, and it went and it's charging you. Probably do it just now. No, so yeah. it's not this one. It's the one specifically where it lowers its head. Um, she's trying to bait that one out. I think it like does a little thing before it does it. This one here. Yeah. So if you parry that attack, it does like this kind of skid and then stops and gives you an opening. Then you just hit it a few times, use the um, firecracker. firecracker, and then just uh, get in a few more hits into the combo. And then once it gets down to like a sixth of its health, it just does this and then you just kill it. Nice and easy. I but guess it is a dead cow. It's a dead bull. I mean, it's super easy, actually. Yeah, I mean, you've done it in the beginning of the game. That's what, two bosses from the beginning of the game we've done again. Yeah. Uh, so there's a pair Save pickup. those development costs. <laughs> <laughs> it's capitalism, bro. What if it was a bull, but it was a ghost bull? And instead of fire, it was whatever you call purple fire <laughs> ghost fire aye that so we picked up a large coin purse there so that's like a thousand uh, thousand coins um, so again you know like if you've not been using your coins to um, either upgrade your items or you buy pellets <laughs> if you've been banking your coins and stuff throughout the game you'll probably have enough money to buy the final mask fragment so and then yeah any bonus skill points that you have just bump it into your attack power if you don't want anything from the other skill pages yeah although i'm pretty sure there are trophies tied to skill pages aren't there uh no don't is there so. not a trophy for unlocking one of the um like, oh th there might be i will we'll, we'll look at it i think there's a trophy for unlocking a skill on like your final page of skills so we're coming down here like and there's this little hidden uh, place this is the kind of final quest uh, you get a bunch of scales from it which you know i guess are fairly useful because you can trade them for items so you get like a bunch of skills in here and then you get the ashina what not ashina fountainhead water fountainhead flask something two treasure chests and one location water of the palace that's insane it. for sekiro it's usually like one treasure chest in about 10 locations roughly but there's two in here alone what's the point you're making here i'm just saying like you <laughs> see like maybe one or two chests in the entire game and then there's two in the same place so like, ne there's nothing, there's no items to pick up in this full game. So now we're going to the final Mibu village. Imagine it was a mimic. <laughs> <laughs> there's only one mimic and it's just any one random chest. No, the real mimic was Sekiro because we all thought it was going to be like Dark Souls. God, you're it right. Wasn't. The mimic was the friends we met along the way. <laughs> so uh, we need to come under this little bit again. And this is the guy that we spoke to earlier that was like... I can't remember if I do it here or if I've actually done it in the game. Point is, you don't even need to do it when you first meet this guy, but he's pretty much like, give me water. Yeah, so you give him water at the palace, and then next time you're here, he turns into a fishman, doesn't he? So he gives you some sake, so that's like another thing that you can like, remember, if you get any booze, you can give them any PCs, and get some more dialogue off them, if you want. So now you... Or, you know, just read the wiki and keep all the sake for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be good if it gave you like drunken fist combat. I'd love that. Why isn't there a mod that lets Sekiro drink his sake? Aye, I know. I just get to everybody else. Fuck the sculptor, fuck Emma, fuck the lot of them. 
Mad Dragon Spring Sake. So we just Homer Bone back, and then we are going to uh, yeah, go back and kill Fishman, right? Yeah, because we had to like rest or meet like a, a loading screen or whatever, and then it's just son. The... I have some bad news. I am a squid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's become a fish noble. His clothes have also became noble. Uh, I mean, that's what he was wearing anyway, but so, it's just red robes like the ones in Fountainhead. So that's three carp scales right there, and that is it for part Not one of Fountainhead. Not half bad. Almost enough scales to make a full carp at this point. Almost. Yep. We've got tons of scales at that's this point. That's what we're going to spend them on. But the scales are very useful because they get you um, some good items. So that is it for Fountainhead part one. Hopefully you found this uh, helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And hopefully six skill points floating on that menu, by the way, doing nothing. Aye, right, look, we'll get to it. We'll get to the fucking skill Do points. Do you need right. them for anything? Or are people just free to burn them? Uh, Any significant skills I'm, necessary? If we don't spend the skill points, you don't spend the skill points. All right, then. You don't need them. You've got the axe. It's fine. It's, it's literally true, by the way. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that part, and we'll see you in the next one. Catch you guys later.